Hey guys, Ryan here with My Listing Club. Recently, a member in our Facebook group asked about the new restaurant menu feature of My Listing and uh, if, if I could do a video on that. So that's what I'm gonna do here today is, is walk through that new feature and we'll see what it's all about. Uh, I'm actually gonna be using this feature for the first time myself, so we'll be learning this together. Okay, so here I am on the My Listing Club um, sandbox website where I do all my testing and uh, walk through some videos and stuff with people. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So on the front end here, uh, actually let's look at the back end first. Um, if we look at our listing type, I created a restaurant listing type and then under the fields, I've added a section called, a heading called menus. And I've just dropped in two of these restaurant menu um, custom fields and drug them over. And then once I put them in there, I just labeled them. One is food and one as drinks. Okay. Uh, for this video, we'll just be looking at the, the food menus. And then over in the single page, and I added a food menu um, tab. And the reason I did that was because a, qu a quick look at the, the My Listing Help Desk um, it's mentioned a few times that they don't allow you to uh, display or change a title. So the only way that you can do that is if you actually have a tab created and you that's where your label comes in. So I did take a quick peek at the help desk to see if there was any gotchas before uh, starting this video and that was one of them. Outside of that, like I said, I'm going to be learning on the fly with all of you. Um, under that tab I've created or I've added the um, restaurant menu block so that's what you see here and I've done nothing other than specified uh, my my food field from over here okay that's the only configuration that I've done prior to this video all of this stuff is the same so we'll be seeing this uh, together I, I left the layout of the tab at the default masonry two columns so we'll see how that goes Okay, so let's go on the front end here. Let's add a listing. I'm gonna do the free one just so we can avoid all the, the payment options and whatnot. We'll give this a title, uh, Pizza Shop. Uh, we're gonna skip the description for now. And then for under food, I'm gonna click add items. Or add item, I'm gonna say pizza. We're going to say that costs ten dollars. This is some good pizza. We're going to add an image. I'm going to add another item. This time it's going to be burger. And the burger is going to be six five dollars. This is a good burger. And I'm going to add another image and submit my listing. Uh, it's still asking for billing details. Dang it. Uh, I forgot to set that up that way. So let me go back here under products. Um, actually under WooCommerce settings, subscriptions. Huh, it's not it's not honoring this zero uh, checkout. That's interesting. All right, well, I'll go back and look at that. Uh, Chuck Norris. Chucky. Putting in all this dummy information here. All right, so that listing is in there. Let's go to our dashboard. And there we see our listing is pending. I 
I approved the listing. Now let's check it out on the back end. So there, there's our listing and let's go see what it looks like. Okay, so that's interesting. It's showing up on the profile. Let me go back and check the um, check that out. So I'm going to go back to my listing type. I'm going to see why that menu is appearing in the profile tab. Oh, that's why. Okay, so I've already let me just remove that from there. So that was my bad. Let me refresh. Okay, there we go. So that's what it should be like. Okay, so we've got our pizza shop. And now we've got our food menu. And that actually looks pretty cool. So if I click on that, what happens? Okay, we get a little gallery, potential gallery. We've got the price. Um, let's go back to our listing type. And so if we look at the, the field, there's, not, there's nothing you really do on this side yet um, they did mention that this is you know the first release of this which we, uh, it is the first release of this so um, they are supposed to add more features to this down the road from my understanding but it's kind of basic at this point um, let's go back to our actual block so label we've got that um, food menu label there so okay so as you can see, um, yeah, it doesn't actually pull in this restaurant menu label. It just pulls in the label of the actual tab. So that's that's a thing that was mentioned in the help desk. So not a big deal. Um, number of columns is two. But then if you have the, let's go back here. Masonry two columns. Let's just start changing these columns and see what happens. Okay, so what this is doing is it's kind of like when you add, um, you know, a post loop or something like that, or WooCommerce products in a row. It's just kind of adjusting. It's saying by default we're going to use um, two columns on the desktop screen, and then it also takes into account what you have for the layout. So it's kind of both working together. So if I was to set this to single column for the entire um, tab, then I'm guessing these two columns are gonna spread out 50% and 50% across the screen. So let's see if that's the case. Yeah, there we go. So that's what it's doing. You, um, it first looks at the layout that you set for your tab, and then it looks, next it looks at the number of columns you've set for um, the various views, desktop, tablet, um, and mobile. Okay, so if we look at this on mobile, looks like that. If we look at it, say on a an iPad, so it's side by side. So we see here that on desktop it's two, tablets two, and mobile one. So yeah, so we've kind of just verified that gap between columns twenty. Um, so what that is, is this, ga this gap right here in the middle. So if we wanted to widen that, we could set it, we'll set it to a high number just so we can make sure it's taking, taking hold. Yep. So that's how that works. Um, let's see what else, what else? Right, that looks like it's about it. One of the questions that I've seen in the help desk is, you know, so when you're adding your listing, um, they don't want to be able, they don't, they don't want users to be able to upload an image um, in some cases. So with that, you can just use some, you know, some, some basic CSS. Um, 
So you just do a display none on that block or that element. Uh, let's see, that's not the right one. Let's see, copy. All right, it's gonna be this one right here. There we go. So you just drop in some CS like that. It's gonna remove the images. Uh, and then with CSS, you can do you know all kinds of other things depending on what your needs are. Um, so like on the front end, you could do some things like, um, let's see what we got here. You just got to find the right element, you know, whichever one. Um, so let's try this and see if this does it. So we could do like a border radius of 50 pixels. There you go. So you can see you can change that. Um, play with, play around with that a little bit. Um, you could do a box shadow. The CSS right from you. You can do a box. You can do a box shadow. Uh, there we go. Here's some CSS right here. So we could take this um, zero zero fifteen negative twenty or twenty px. So there we go, we added a bit more shadow. Um, there we go, you can play with that. As you can see, you can add some nice box shadow to it. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. You could change the, give it like a totally unique border radius for this if you wanted. So instead of just doing a 20 pixel border radius across the whole thing, you could do 20 px, 10 px, 20 px, and then 10 px. Um, let's give this be more dy let's do 50. Anyway, you get the idea. You can get really creative with your menu items and how you design it. Um, this text can also be adjusted. So if you really want to make this text pop bigger. Do that. Um, you can edit the description. Uh, obviously, I'd recommend instead of doing pixels for your fonts, you know, do like a, do like the EM. So let's drop this down to like one. One EM is, is 18 pixels, so let's go like 1.2, 1 1.5. There you go. Things like that, you know, you could change the color depending on your branding. All the red. Uh, we can make it the branding that I'm actually using for the site. Like that. There you go. I uh, hope this was useful. Um, I think this is a really good start um, for this. I don't think I've missed anything. Like I said, on the field side, there's really not a whole lot there. It's just your standard stuff on the actual block. Um, there's not much here either for now, but I think they're going to add to it from what I've read. Um, yeah. All right. Let me know if, if you know of something else I've missed or um, uh, you've done something else with this that would help people. Uh, let me know. Let us know. Thanks. Bye-bye.